So, you probably can't see too well, but unfortunately, this is the best thing I could think to do. <laughs> You're sitting on my bench box. So, uh, the box is in front. I'm going to go ahead and probably try to connect up. Maybe I can lift this on something. Maybe a box over here. Before. Let's do... Let's do that. Let's see. Does that work better? Eh. It's better. Let's see. I'll rotate you. Yeah, so I'm trying to figure out what's the best way to mount these things in here. I've hooked up my ground cable, which will be connected to the chassis, and it's already connected to this box. So the box is grounded. This is the incoming negative from the battery. Since this is the BMS, the ground will be the external lead coming from the BMS, not the lead from the battery itself. So there's that. So I went ahead and I attached this board with these nice little, uh, believe it or not, RC machine screws because they were the perfect fit for uh, whatever these the Chinese people used on this uh, this board here. And yeah, so there you go. Went ahead and soldered on the, the negative lead. This is a two gauge, two gauge cable, I believe. And yeah. So anyway, so I have this two gauge cable, and it's also locked in here with a bolt uh, so that's not moving that's how it was grounded before when it was grounded right to the battery so right now I'm determining if I want this reversing switch here and this contactor here now if I do that it makes it really convenient to connect up my uh, my positive lead from the emergency on and off switch it's basically the the lead that turns on the power to the entire machine I can just make a little steel bracket from this lead to this lead of the uh, terminals and that'll make it a very solid fit. It'll have three anchors. It'll have the two going into the base and the one holding this on and then this will not rotate as easily either without having to bear down on these bolts over here. So yeah, I'm just going to leave this video recording and hope, hope I get somewhere decent with it. Let me get my... That does provide a little bit of wiggle room, which is nice. Let's go ahead and do that. Now, I'm probably not going to have the metal bracket to build it yet tonight, but this is a start. The process of actually filming this process is they were not more difficult than actually doing it. I'll probably have it all finished in one night, otherwise, honestly. So I took off the main trigger lead and I'm going to just place this to the side for now while I go ahead and check there's nothing behind it and start to drill these pilot holes I probably wouldn't have it all done in one night, but I'd have a good majority of it done. That's kind of what I ended up doing the first time around when I didn't document this process. So. And like I said in the, the dismantling or the uh, pointing out what the parts were video, uh, this is very, very much what I'm planning to do with the lawnmower as well. 
See, with this idea, I can actually take this whole box and just move it when I need to move it to a new application. Because if I ever try to upgrade, everything's self-contained. It's not mounted to the vehicle, which is nice. So you just take the motor in your box and uh, hopefully a control lead box and this will be good to go. up but for now this will just have to do. I was thinking I could put it on this but I'm actually planning to use the part that's in this box so I don't want to destroy it said part. Maybe one of these nice blue butt bins in the back I could pull down. Um, you know a roll of paper towels ain't gonna fit hurt too bad. Look at squash. That's better than nothing. Yeah, I don't have any fancy equipment, so huh. I'm just a small time guy on here. <laughs> so we got this one, we got that one. Of course, my nuts and bolts don't look the same. <laughs> I don't know where I fart sourced these from. But they will work. See, I was just going to use a sheet metal screws and hold this thing in but it's actually more of a pain than you think to do that because then I got to get the really tiny sheet metal screws and never accidentally rub up against the back of this thing. So let's just scratch up your old arm. Let's see. I got this started and I'll move my arm out of the way. I really hate how all this stuff has to kind of be squashed in here, but I am not a professional by any means. So a lot of this just looks terrible. <laughs> And attached. So now we have the contactor attached. That's pretty awesome. Now, later on, the trick that they don't seem to point out too well if you're not a good at following a schematic like me is to, this is your key on switch right here. So what you want to do is intercept not the negative side of this, this uh, diode here, but the positive side. You want to intercept this side. Whatever side of the resistor or the diode that's red. So the incoming side. And that is your key signal. That will go to red is key switch ignition or whatever the I stands for. It's key switch. Anyway, it just sends the signal, tells the controller to turn on and power on. Uh, these two leads over here are for a control or a uh, potentiometer input. And blue is for reverse, green I don't use, and red or and black goes to solenoid minus. I believe it goes here. So you got key switch here, black goes here. And that's what you need to, I believe, turn this on when it comes time. So I took a picture of this just in case so I wouldn't screw it up later. So we got that mounted, we got this one to get in place now, this is the reversing contactor. Now all of these make it a pain in the butt to work on because 
these bolts, as you can see, tight cramp space. So you don't want to do this with power turned on, or you end up with this. <laughs> Isn't that a nice, shiny example of what not to do if you don't know that right here? That's a, uh, a big burn mark where my one of my wrenches actually welded itself to the cabinet and made a very bright welding light that blinded everybody in the room for a moment or two. So, don't do that. You learn your lessons the hard way. <laughs> so that'll do it there. And let me remember this correctly. This lead, and this is my positive out, this is my negative out, mutually exclusive because it doesn't really apply. It depends on how you hook up your leads up here. But in general, these are the ones that get reversed. These are the ones that get hooked up to the motor, I believe. <laughs> Don't quote me on that. I'll, I'll look at my picture and yell at myself later. But yeah. And this gets the red positive, assuming, again, my picture's right. And this gets the negative. Actually, I think I'm wrong. I think these are the ones that go to the motor. But yeah, you'll see it in the final product anyway. So The nice thing I decided to do, I'm doing a lot of talking, obviously, is I got these bus bars or terminals. And what they're going to do is allow me to hook up my diodes or anything that needs to be connected in this box right at the bottom. So they're going to be mounted down here right next to each other so that I can put a diode between them and allow myself to, yeah, between these and allow myself to hook up all the contacts that are down here on this reversing contactor instead of directly soldering to it. So, a lot of talk. I'm probably not going to film all of that. I feel like it's a lot of work to try to keep everybody updated on this, but we'll see. Also, I need to find a video editor that can combine all these videos and speed these up. All right. Let me mark these spot. I don't want to get it right. Nice Sharpie. Isn't this professional for you? Best kind. Sharpie kind. <laughs> All right, let me get a. Uh, hmm, do I care about the pilot hole? Well, I went ahead and I drilled these holes. My wife came out for a second, so. Sorry we got a little interrupted. Let me uh, close my eyes and blow on this thing. mounted before so it's always a surprise when you don't have what you expect I may have to go out to the shed and find myself a nice bolt uh, well I'm back again <laughs> just got back from the uh, shed I found a whole bunch of bolts and nuts so don't know where the other ones went, but there we go, I got a pump. All right, so hopefully I can find the conductor now. <laughs> so I drilled the holes while, while I had a little bit off, and I'm gonna go ahead and mount this in here using just standard nut and bolt. I'm gonna come back later with a uh, 
again later. <laughs> Always later. And then come back later with. Um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and drill this hole a little bit wider because reasons. Wouldn't be complete without a without a reason. Nice set. <laughs> Believe it or not, I got off this eBay. It's fantastic. It's all American made and 100% lifetime warranty on it. So I can just turn them in whenever I want to. At least that's what I was told. I mean, it is eBay. I'm going to go ahead and widen this. There we go. This isn't the correct way to do this. Don't do this. I don't do what I'm doing. It's not correct. Right. Let's go ahead and put them in place now. Hopefully that gives me the spacing I need uh, to feed one of these. Actually, no. Wow. It still needs one more bigger. Let's see. I don't want to go to the hardware store just to buy the correct size nuts and bolts. Eh, that's what we're doing. <laughs> I'm just going to keep going up one at a time until it works. Use what you got. Let's see if that's right. It's tight, but it works. Alright, again, don't do this. Watch it not be the right button, not right. That would be funny. Make sure these are right. <laughs> yep, good. They fit. <laughs> that would have been terrible. And if it doesn't fit, use the hammer or put the side of one for the make-believe hammer. The tool that wants to be a hammer. All right. Now we hope and pray that this will fit. Now, I'm not going to, I'm not sure if I'm going to tighten, bother to tighten all this stuff down. Let me see. Let me see if the socket's right behind me. If it is, I'll do it. Alright, I'm guessing, let's see. Half or 960. But my guess is half. Half inch. Best kind is the kind you don't have to hold with it. Yeah. Again. There we go. Now it ain't more. 
See, my, my thoughts are that this is just going to come off again later when I'm trying to do something like wire it up. So I don't know the direction it matters. I can go ahead and phone, you screwed up. Stay recording. That's the point. All right, well, anyway, it's mounted. That's mounted. Now we go ahead and put this back into place. Now, do I want to go ahead and do that now, or do I want to... See, a lot of this has got to come off anyway. Again, because i got to get in here to tighten these, and loosen these bolts, depending on what I'm doing. And I know this one comes off. I know this one comes off. I know these two need to be accessed. I don't want to lose these parts. So, I'm going to go ahead and put it in there. Seems dumb, but whatever. It is what it is. We're going to put that gear back. Tighten that down as hard as it will go. There we go. Now we turn the lights on. We're going to put the little control lever back. Try to find the screw that didn't want to come with me. You know, I would recommend this switch. It is nice. But there are a lot of intricate parts that just, you know, you got to keep track of. And actually, this little screw I'm tightening is loose. And I went to unloosen it anyway. I'm thinking I need a different size. Yeah, that's a lot tighter. That's a lot better. Well, I don't know if it's better. Hold on. I have a feeling that this is too close. I need to loosen them up. I'm hoping I can record now. <laughs> my internal storage ran out of memory, but sorry, my SD card ran out of memory. My internal storage still has plenty of memory. Well, anyway, uh, what I was trying to say before the video cut off was basically. I'm pretty happy with where I've gotten so far. I've got the three main components. I've got the controller, I've got the contactor, I've got the main on off switch, and I've got the reversing solenoid mounted in their positions that I'm hoping that they'll stay in. And if I do say so, I think it looks a lot cleaner this way than all my finagled web. Got the BMS mounted, which is nice because now it's feeding a ground like I was showing earlier. And I've black next will be this. Uh, it actually already has holes. I'm hoping I can just reuse them. I think it's up here. It's my ammeter. And I can reuse them, but they're not perfectly straight, which is annoying. But not a terrible thing. But anyway, right there, and that'll be my voltmeter slash ammeter. It has these nice little prongs that go through it that limit and read, I guess, the resistance and such to figure out the different mechanics of what's going on with the battery. Um, or what the controller's drawing. Let's see, so that'll go up there, and then these little uh, bus bars, I'm thinking, are going to go literally where they're at, right about here. And that'll give me access to them whenever I need to. These little plastic shields come off, and these little screws can be tightened down to allow a wire through. And this is a little neater than using crimps and such, because I could just use a screwdriver to undo my wires as I need to see fit. And also anything that's coming in from here can go into this bus bar and then be spliced into any of these up here. This allows me a little bit more leeway in the wires as well because they'll be attached to the box physically, meaning it's a lot harder for them to get ripped out of here because they'll be mounted. And anything internally won't get affected if that did happen because they will be separate leads anyway. They'll be separate wires and they won't rip out my leads up here or mess up my $500 controller or 
anything else in here. Not to mention this reversing conductor, which is like another $200. <laughs> Not, when you think about how much money you put into something, you don't want it to break. So I have my fuse box. This will go on the input net battery negative. It's probably going to go somewhere like over here, straight up and down. And it'll have a lead coming in from probably the box or yeah, coming in from the box itself or the, the ground, the, the physical contraption. And that will come in and out of the same fuse, go into the ammeter I was just pointing out that will be on it up here. And then the ammeter will have a wire going over to a battery negative. <laughs> it's always fun. And this little lead over here, the one mounted on the controller is for the output negative to the motor, if anybody didn't know that already. So the box is going to be mounted straight in the back of this thing and wired up to that battery. I might swap the battery around because of length requirements or length issues here. <laughs> length issues. <laughs> so we've got this lead positive, this lead negative. Well, with the distance they are, they're also able to get trapped in that tire, which is a, sorry, negative positive. With the distance that they are from this tire, it's a lot more likely that the wire will get stripped on that tire. So if I flip this battery this way, so the leads are on the inside, it's a little less distance and a little bit safer in my opinion. Now I've already got a little bit of a problem here because the battery actually blocks the fan to a little bit. There's still space in here. Air can be pulled in to blow and cool the motor. And hopefully because it's mounted to a metal frame already, it dissipates the heat to the chassis already. But you know, I've never experienced a problem, but that doesn't mean that there isn't one. I already disconnected a lot of the old wiring here. My current thought process is to put this 12 volt down converter unit, hold held in with these two screws up here, into the box that will have my switches. So, oh yeah, from earlier I, I did swap these so that they're more uniform, so they're both the same. I went back and I got a switch. This is my forward reverse, it's neutral. This is my on off for the whole system. And I'm thinking I'm gonna put that 12 volt down converter or 48 volt down converter to 12 volts in this box as well. So it'll be hidden in a nice little box. The box will be mounted right on that metal steel frame right there, right underneath the steering wheel. And well, that's the current, that's the goal now. This is all assuming that the box and everything fits in the box and that I'm not a complete idiot. <laughs> so we'll go with that. I'm also thinking that my, my pedal wire, this lead right here, I have my uh, potentiometer outputs coming out of it, can go into the box mounted up here. So the only place that will have a connection will be that box to the big box in the back of the system. So there will be no funneling of wires, no crazy stuff happening, and a lot more secure in the fact that I can just unscrew a few little screws down here if I ever want to sell the go-kart and keep the electronics and move them on to a different system or a different, a different frame or something. Or if I want to make another lawnmower that does something cool, or I was thinking a jet ski would be a fun one. So I have to work on this for now, though. You got to work on what you got. <laughs> and that's about it for tonight, I think. So I went ahead and I connected up the the bus bars or the terminals at the bottom, and put in some my diodes. That's not the final position, however. I think you get the idea now because one of these will come in, come out over here, and that'll feed whatever it needs to feed throughout the system. And that way, forward reverse can actually be turned on and off without destroying one of my diodes, which thankfully I got a bag of them for like 10 cents from China again. <laughs> AliExpress is your friend. I mounted the amp meter. That didn't really mount it. I used the original holes, so I put it back where it was and left it in place. This is an original wire. This is going to go to voltage positive or I guess live. 
Anyway, it'll go over here, but it's probably not going to be this green wire. I'm probably going to do something a little bit better because this only has so many bends in it. It's just a solid core of copper wire. Um, what was I going to do next? Oh, I'm drilling out these two holes that are right here, a little wider, so I can mount my fuse holder in that place. And it's a 400 amp fuse. You can get them from golf shops or something like that. I'm trying to find it in my pile of junk down here. I might have already put it on the table. Um, yes, I did. It looks like that. So mine's a 400 amp fuse. Uh, probably recommend a 200 amp fuse, but I just don't have one. This is one I had laying around in the lawnmower. The lawnmower needed a 400 amp. -er. It will continuously pull anywhere from 300 to 500 amps, but a fuse is good for just a bit more than what it's rated for. So it would hit 500 amps if I hit a stump, for instance, which in that case, you'd probably want the fuse to go. You don't want to destroy your motor and all the brushes and everything, assuming you have a brushed motor or your battery or anything else. You don't overload your controller. That's expensive. You want the fuse to go. It's like a $3 fuse. Anyway, getting on with this. So I think I'm going to use these two screws and I'm going to go ahead and try to find one of my bits that is a good pass-through size. Might be too close. Let's go, let's go a size up right there. Definitely bigger and that will get me the desired effect I believe. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this and film. So I'll try to put this again. You're sitting in my bench vice, but that's just life. Here we go. Here's the fun. Let me get it centered. Let's see if that works for this. Oh yeah, perfect. All right. So I, this actually had smaller holes in it originally, but I wanted it to be very secure. I don't want the fuse coming off and hitting something in here and blowing like, prematurely. So all I'm doing, if I can get it to quite feed for me. Uh, come on. Just pushing these. Oops, my bad. See, and that's why you don't want a tower. <laughs> you don't want that to happen. I'm gonna wiggle this around in that hole a little bit and see if it's got something hanging. That might help. So what I did is I widened those holes. You see them now? They're a little bit cleaner than they were before. And I'm hoping that those two hold these two screw oh, focus. Come on. There you go. Does it fit in those holes? So I'm going to do that again while you're sitting over here. All right, they appear to fit. Now, start the screws on the other side of them. Keep them in place so it doesn't fall again. The less falling, the better. All right, let's try to do this now. All right, got one. I got two. And I think we're mounted. Now I'm going to tighten the bear down on these. Now I have a fuse holder. Of course, it's not straight. Nothing's ever straight, <laughs> even though you mark it as good as you can. But it's straight enough. Like that BMS was supposed to be straight. Look at that. Look how crooked that thing is. Look at these things. They're not straight. They're crooked. <laughs> oh, well, I think it looks better than the original, but I'll put the picture up here if I can and show you with the original versus this. Nothing's ever straight. All right. So I myself don't know which direction, if it matters, that this thing gets put in here, but I've always put it in between the washers. So there's... There's washers, there's two of them. I'm gonna try. And you wanna get this between 
there's two washers. Yeah, there's probably a better way to do this, but there. So I got one in. Now I gotta do the same thing up here. Get it between my two washers. Come on. Oh. I actually did not have it between the washers. I had it between the, the lock nut or the uh, lock washer. I want it between the washers. That way, nothing can be messed up. So, there. And pull these guys apart. The big hands are not a fun thing right now. There we go. So now it'll just sit there. And I'm going to tighten that down for now with my just hand tight or finger tight. You don't want it to fall out while you're assembling. You just kind of want to get the basic picture of how this is going to look. That will be what the box looks like with a bunch of wires obviously sprawled out throughout it. And it's basically back together. It needs to be wired up, like I just said, but that is the goal. I mean, I've done what I did the first time, but I think it'll be a little bit neater, a little bit less hazard going on here. The BMS used to just be hanging out in front of this thing, which was a terrible idea, <laughs> but it worked for the time being. I mean, I have had electrical issues because the motor, we went over a bump, it went down and chopped one of these green wires in half and made a big old spark, cutting the key switch wire in half so the thing just stopped while we were out there and had to push it back. <laughs> and it's not fun pushing this thing back. Uh, so we're trying to avoid that this time. Well, I truly believe that is it for tonight now. Hooking up the forward reverse switch. Well, not really hooking it up, I'm just drilling the hole for it. So I'm going to be mounting it to this, I guess, conduit box. So it's meant for electrical, but for house electrical. I'm not really gonna work on a house electrical, obviously. So I figure it's waterproof. It's got a nice bearing around the outside or a rubber gasket, sorry, not bearing. And we're just gonna drill the uh, holes that I need for this secure them tightly. So I'm going to have hopefully a forward reverse switch on the right. And then I've got another one from AutoZone. This is the on off switch. This is like the key switch. You could actually get a key, but I mean, <laughs> if someone's willing to steal it, I guess better on them. So same. drill press here. I'm going to go ahead and tighten her up. <clears throat> oh, helps if you plug it in. There we go. So if I want it there, I'm thinking higher the better gives me room to expand if I ever want to. About right there, roughly. Gives us a nice hole for this, assuming I get the measurement right. It should be a perfect fit. Let's see how that looks one. Now I'm not going to use the little on-off plate. It doesn't really make sense because this is a two-way switch. It's going to be a forward reverse, so I'll have to put some stickers on here in the end. But uh, let's see. Let's see if we can get this to start with some pliers. No, I mustn't have it perfect. Maybe I'll flip it upside down and see what happens. A lot more finicky to get this bolt on than it was to take off. So 
Assuming I remember to, I'll just skip this. This is crazy. What the hell? Tighten up. I'm gonna have to do this with an actual bolt soon, but for now, that's good for one side. Okay. <laughs> Take it back off because I just love doing it again for the other one. Double work. It's always fun. Okay. Now this is just a simple toggle switch. At least it's supposed to be. Hmm. It appears that this might be a also a bi-directional switch. The measurements are the same, so I'm gonna cut it right, but I might go back to the hardware store and get a the correct toggle switch. Let's see. The diameter of the opening is the same as the bigger one, surprisingly. So we'll try to find where I want to place. there. Now, oh, it looks pretty good to me. I mean, perfection is nice, but let's see. Oh, looks like he's got an extra... washer on them for a nut. There we go. I might take that off completely. I don't see a point in having it there. Especially since I'm going to just mount it flush anyway. I might not bring it back. I might just have both up and down be considered long, which would be fine with me. Well, that one's a lot easier to put on than the uh, other one. All right. Probably said that too soon. Let's see if we can get it to stay in place now. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. What's funny is this one cost more or less than the other, the regular, regular toggle switch. So I bought this one thinking, oh, it's the same one. Why don't I just get the cheaper one? So this one has on in both directions, which seems silly. Why would this be $4.99 and the other one be $5.99? But not a terrible thing. I can just work with it. Gotta make this thing super tight. I think. What am I doing? There we are. There. All right. Well, I'll look for it. Just what I needed. And then we'll put him in. It appears this one has a uh, metal hand side too. 
I'm going to tighten them down so it's not affecting symmetry here. That would be so that would be off at a neutral. That would be on, still in neutral. This would be reverse, and this would be forward. And off will it just turn off all power to everything. Now we also have an emergency switch on the go kart itself. But this is very much like how I was trying to design the lawnmower to be. I might go back and do a very similar design on it because I like the encased electrics that can't be accidentally wire crossed. So the plan is I'm going to put a small hole in the back of this when I'm ready, not with this bit, smaller bit. And I'm going to possibly have another switch on there. I don't think you can see it because I'm looking at the down camera, but there's a switch on the steering wheel that's for the headlights that I didn't put there. I think the previous owner of this put it there. And that might be perfect for putting as a toggle switch on here. But it also might be perfect to leave where it is because they're headlights. You know, you want them close to hand if you need them. So there's going to be a whole bunch of switches on here, basically. And I'm hoping it comes out decently. Oh, yes. And before I turn off my camera. The wire that I was telling you about in the previous video, the $3 wire, has four wires in it, so they're not designated, they're just colored, so I'm going to probably designate them for my own purposes. Uh, one of them is going to come in as 48 volts, which is just a, a line voltage or a, um, yeah, it's not going to have much amperage going through it, so it's going to be very high voltage but small amperage. That is the key switch signal and the forward reverse signal, that'll be the 48 volt uh, switch coming in and out. So, it will have one wire designated for forward, one wire designated for reverse, I'm thinking white and green, one and for one, one coming in for 48 volts, um, what is it, 48 volts uh, ground, and one coming in for 12, uh, 48 volts to the 12 volt down converter, a uh, voltage down converter back there. So that'll give me the headlights power. And because the unit itself is ground, I don't need a six wire, I only need the four. Sorry, I had to think that out in my head because I thought about it at the store. And that's about it. Oh, I don't think I had that on film here. So I have all these colors. That's it.